Jerry at Fair Oaks. Jerry. Everybody out in the quad's talking about it. Well, what is it, Lee? Why are... Now, wait a minute. Take it easy. Here. Be getting your tie on. You haven't got much time. Okay. Well, you were right. You're suspected of loosening this cinch strap on Splendor and causing Warren to fall. But, Lee, I, I didn't do it. I wouldn't do a thing like that. I know, Jerry, but it looks like you did. Now, listen. The reason you're being called into Major Davis's office is for questioning. All right, all right. I know that. But there must be something else. Why do I have to put on my full-dress uniform? Well, I found out about that, too. I overheard a couple of upperclassmen talking about it. Well, why? Well, because it's a form of questioning to see if there's enough evidence against you to make a case out of it. A, a case of it? What do you mean by that? Well, you might be court-martialed, Jerry. Court-martialed? Yes, Jerry. Well, why should I have to go before a court if I didn't do anything? Well, maybe you can clear yourself from the questioning and there won't be any court martial. Well, it, it isn't fair, Lee. Listen to me. You told me yourself that Sergeant Alden asked you if you were out in the stable. And you told me you said yes. All right, I was out in the stable. Besides, I was in Splendor's stall. I told you that. But I only went out to see him and to give him some sugar. Being there doesn't mean I loosen the saddle. You get into your coat now. You believe me, don't you, Lee? Sure I do. I, I couldn't do a trick like that. See here now. If you didn't do it, don't worry. You should be glad there's going to be a questioning. Every little fine point will come up, and you'll most likely be cleared. Your belt's a little to one side. Yeah, that's better. Now, take your cap and let's go. You don't want to be late. Okay, I'm ready. Uh, smooth your hair down a little before you put your cap on. There, is that better? Hmm? My hair, is it all right now? Oh, yes. Okay, Jerry, now, don't talk too loudly on the way over. We don't want any of the fellas to hear us. Okay. Now, put your head up. Chin out. If you're not guilty, don't give the impression you are. Where's that old fight? How's this? Better. That's the way. Just think, Lee. I just got my dress uniform the other day, and the first time I get a chance to wear it, it's for questioning. For something I didn't Jerry do. Jerry Dugan, will you stop it now? First thing you know, you'll be feeling sorry for yourself. And when you get that way, it's, it's just too bad. I've never had anything like this happen before. Nothing's happened yet, and... Well, maybe nothing will. Come on, this way. There's a bunch of fellas out there by the fountain. Now quit worrying now. And remember that old saying about bridges. Yeah, I know the one you mean. Don't cross your bridges until you come to them. Right. Remember that. It's a good one. Lee. Yes? You know I didn't loosen that cinch strap. Yes, I believe you, Jerry. Then who did? Well, that's why they're having the hearing. Don't you think it's possible that, that the saddle slipped by itself? Not from what some of the fellows say. I forget who it was, but one of the boys told me the sergeant said there was a mark in the leather where it had always been fastened, and that when he examined it, after Warren fell off Splendor, the buckle was fastened in another notch. He was positive it was tampered with. There just isn't any doubt about it. But, well, why pick on Warren? Everybody seems to like him. That is funny. I don't know, there just doesn't seem to be a reason for it. Builds up the case against you, though. How do you mean? Well, a person might think you wanted Warren to get hurt so he couldn't ride Splendor, and, and you'd get to ride him. Oh, I, I see. You can't go in with me, huh? No, no, I can't. 
I'll wait for you, though. I'll be right outside the major's office in the corridor. Will you? Sure. I'm not going to let you down. Buck up now. Oh, I'll be all right. Sure you will. Remember to keep calm. Think before you answer the questions they ask you. And, and be just as nice as you can. It'll help a lot. Well, here's the office now. Go ahead. And I'll be out here in the corridor somewhere, and I'll watch for you. Good, good luck, Jerry. Thanks, Lee. Keep your chin up now. Enter. Good at Dugan reporting, sir. Oh, well, uh, stand over there, Dugan. Yes, sir. You said uh, Captain Gardner went back into his classroom. Is that right, Major Metcalf? Yes, sir. He was in there just a few minutes ago. Hello. Uh, Captain Gardner, Major Davis. You can come in now. Cadet Dugan is here. Right. Enter. Major Davis, Metcalf. Okay, sit down, Sergeant. Thank you. Now, oh, here, take this chair. Your detention, Dugan. Uh, yes, sir. So one of the men said Dr. Campbell would call here in your office just as soon as he had a report. Mm, good, good. Enter. Major Davis, Sergeant Alden, Major Metcalf. Uh, take this chair on my right here, Captain Gardner. Make yourself comfortable. Thank you, sir. Now then, Cadet Dugan. Yes, sir. It's with profound regret we call this meeting. While it isn't the first time we've had to resort to extreme measures at Fair Oaks, let me assure you it hasn't happened often. Dugan, your attitude, your remarks, and your actions lead both Sergeant Alden and Cadet Major Metcalf to believe it was you who loosened the cinch strap on the horse Splendor thereby causing one of your teammates, Cadet Paul Warren, to fall from his mount and receive serious injury. sir, I think I... Now, uh, let me finish, please. You may talk in just a minute. Now, during this hearing, we want to learn the truth. We would like very much for you to be able to clear yourself of all guilt in the matter. I am sure we all agree on that. Certainly. Certainly. But on the other hand, if you can't, we will have to call a court-martial with Cadet Major Metcalf presiding over the cadet officers. Cadet Major Metcalf, take over now. Cadet Dugan. Yes, sir. Did you or did you not say to me yesterday, if I don't get to ride Splendor, no one else will? Did you say that? Y yes, sir, I, I did. That's all. Sergeant Alden? Cadet Dugan, do you admit that you went out into the stable and back to Splendor's stall this afternoon before the other cadets on the team arrived? Yes, sir. That's all. Captain Gardner. What's your excuse, Dugan, for going back into the stable without permission? I went out to see Splendor and to give him some sugar. I, I didn't think there was anything wrong in that. Don't you know the stable is out of bounds at all times unless you are engaged in some activity there? Yes, sir, but I figured I was an activity there. I'm on the team, and I only came out a little before the rest. Pardon me, Captain Gardner. Yes, Major Metcalf. Sergeant Alden, will you repeat the remark you made to me about the saddles for the benefit of Major Davis and Captain Gardner? I'll be glad to. Cadet Major Metcalf has reference to my remark... Oh, excuse me, Sergeant, please. Sir. Hello? Yes. Oh, yes, yes, Doctor. Mm-hmm. Oh, is that so? Oh, it's too bad. He will, huh? He's getting a report on Warren. Mm-hmm, uh, yes. Well, well, yes. All right, Doctor. Thank you. Goodbye. Excuse me, Sergeant. Go ahead now with what you were going to say. What I told Cadet Major Metcalf was this, that I personally saddled each and every one of the horses, and that no one besides myself and Cadet Dugan were in the stalls prior to the team mounting the horses. I'm sure of that. I'm also sure that the saddle on Splendor was definitely tampered with, the buckle being moved down and loosened one notch, enough to cause the saddle to slip. Uh, thank you, Sergeant. Now then, that phone call was a report from Dr. Campbell on Paul Warren's condition. I'm sorry to say Paul received a fracture of the right clavicle. He will be laid up without the use of his arm for at least six weeks. I'm that's sorry to hear that, that That's a fractured collarbone. That's right. Yes, and that's very serious. Warren might have been killed in the fall like he took. Do you have anything to say now, Dugan? Yes, sir, I, I'd like to say something. Go ahead. Well, sir, I, I do admit saying what I said yesterday, but, but honestly, I didn't mean anything by it. I admit I went out to the stall to see Splendor, too. But really, all, all I did was feed him a couple of pieces of sugar. I, I didn't touch the cinch strap. I wouldn't do a thing like that, and especially to Paul Warren. I, I like him. Does that mean you might do something of the same nature to someone you disliked? Oh, no, sir. 
Anything more to say, Dugan? Only that I didn't do it. No matter what I said or, or what I did, I, I didn't do it. Mm. Dugan, uh, you're to go directly to your room now and remain there until you receive further orders. Yes, sir. Here I am, Jerry. What happened, Jerry? Is it all right? Well, sir, I have to go right up to the room and wait there. Well, then it's not over yet? I guess not. They all think I did it. What did they say? Oh, they asked me if I was out in the stable. I said I was. They asked me, that is, Ted did, if I said I was going to ride Splendor or nobody else would. Hey, Philip! Uh, okay, be right with you. Uh, go ahead, Jerry. Uh, wait for me at the fountain. What do they have to pick on me for? You'd think I was the only one in the world. He used to be my horse. Now they won't even let me feed him a little sugar. What's wrong with that? What'll Mr. Randall say? He'll believe me. But maybe he won't. Jerry, wait a minute. What'd they want? Come on, hurry it up. What do you mean? I, I asked you what they wanted. What did those fellows call you over for? A answer me. Leash. Come on, th this isn't any time to kid. Okay, there's no one around now. What are you talking about? Jerry, all the fellas at school are going to give you the chill. What does that mean? Come on, hurry. What's the chill, Lee? Oh, wait till we get into the room. Come on, here we are. Listen, Jerry, you're in a bad spot. It'll work out all right, but until it does, the fellas won't talk to you. They'll all turn away from you if you start to talk to them. That's the chill, Jerry. Even I can't talk to you unless we're up here in the room where no one can see me. Ollie, I, I don't deserve it. Why should they treat me like that? I, I didn't do anything. Oh, Jerry. Yes? Captain Gardner. Uh oh. Come in, Captain Gardner. Jerry. Cadet Dugan? Yes, sir. Dugan, you're going to be court-martialed. You'll have to stand trial before a board of cadet officers with Cadet Major Metcalf presiding. You'll receive further instructions later. Well, they didn't believe me. <laughs> <laughs>